Okay, so we'll go ahead and get started. Good morning, everyone. Thank you for joining us today. My name is Monica Dragolski. My name is Jackie Duong. And today we'll be talking uh, to you about how you can automate your tasks with Project Planner and Microsoft Flow, now known as Project Automate. So on a day-to-day -day basis, we seem to have a never-ending list of tasks. But a lot of those tasks are super redundant or mundane. Let's say um, getting information from one place or another, moving data around. And this can really distract us from the work that we actually need to get done, um, our key requirements. And from uh, user research, we know that people can actually only get three to seven tasks done every day. So what you choose to work on really matters. But with Microsoft Flow, or Project Automate, you can make sure that you automate those mundane tasks to stay focused on the work that you need to do on a day-to-day -day basis. Oops. Go ahead. All right. So uh, like Monica mentioned, Power Automate integrates uh, with lots of connections, which really include Project and Planner, which we'll focus on today. So to work with Power Automate with Planner, there's a Planner connector that exists that has actions and triggers that connect directly to the Planner data. That's been out, and you can use that today. Before I go into project, who here has been to a project session this week, visited us at the booth, tried out the new project? All right, if you haven't, highly recommend it. We're right over there. Just a little shout out. Um, but project, so the new Microsoft project is uh, built on the Power Platform. So all of the data is stored in, the CD, in CDS, the, or also known as the Common Data Service. So to connect to Power Automate and build flows in Power Automate with project data, you actually just go straight to the CDS connector where you'll have all of the project data goodness and plenty more. Um, so although there aren't any project-specific actions or a specific uh, connector, you'll actually find that connecting straight to CDS will get you um, will allow you to extend and build out your data sets um, in a very powerful way. So first off, I'm going to uh, talk a little bit about the project data in CDS with Power Automate. And we'll also get into Planner uh, quickly after. So for anyone who hasn't seen the new project, this is a screenshot of it. And you'll see that there's a lot of information all across this project. All of this information is um, accessible through uh, the common data service and for, in, for uh, Power Automate uh, through the CDS connector. So everything you see here are uh, separate entities. So for example, you can access all the projects uh, through the project entity in the CDS connector or all the tasks. We also have information like the bookable resources, which are just all of the possible resources or uh, people that can be assigned to work across your projects. There's also resource assignments, which represent all of the assignments across all your tasks um, as well. So these are just some examples of the project entities you can access in the CDS connector. There's plenty more. Pretty much everything you see um, exists there. So um, instead of just checking out this like very bland, not moving static picture, we're going to jump right into demos. So um, we can show, oh, jump right into demos. Oh, did I? No, Jackie, hold on. Yeah. Getting there. Oh, we're getting there, folks. Ready to go? Um, can, you, can you hear yourself? No, I, I didn't. Oh. Oh, yeah. Interesting. So, so we're actually going to do this uh, a little bit in reverse um, due to some technical difficulties. So, in this case here, we have, um, let's just pivot one more over. Sorry, jumping ahead to the planner demo. We were going to do project first. Um, but here we are. So um, in this scenario, we have Vicky, who is a content writer. But once she has the work that she needs to do, she actually needs to request some design assets um, from the design team. And the design team is managing all of their requests and asks in Planner. They have a Planner board to manage all the requests that they have incoming. Um, but to streamline this process for everyone who's making those requests, they have a form. 
So from this form here, um, Vicky, who's asked, making these requests of the content writer, uh, excuse me, um, can just go ahead and make the request right here. So project assets. And then from the form, she can set the date by which she needs that information and submit that request. And then right here in the plan, the request will come in and the design team will be able to see, let's just you know, refresh one more time. Um, so, so here you have it. That request comes in from the form into the planner plan. So the design team can go ahead and manage and organize that request alongside all the other requests that they have. So I'll go ahead and show you all just how we made that happen, how we got that information from the flow right into Planner. So go ahead and play this wonderful video. So we'll go to Flow and start by creating a new flow. Um, we'll do an automated flow because we're doing a specific trigger action. So start by naming the flow. Here, um, because it's the transit design mocks for the design team, uh, we'll just go ahead and name that flow so you can find it later. And the trigger here is forms, that same form that I just showed you where Vicky was able to make her request. So to start with that trigger, we need to make sure that we're finding the correct form. So you start filling the specific information here so we know where to get that data and send it to. So once you specify the form, we need to make sure we're getting all the details for that form. So um, you pick the action to get the response details. And then you need to specify the correct form. Make sure we're getting the data from the right place. And then um, once we have all of that information processed into the flow, we have to make that next connector. So where is this data going? We want it to go into Planner. And then for Planner, there are a few options that you have uh, to do. You can either update an existing task, but in this case, we're going to create a new one because it's a new request for the design team. Once you've opted for that um, action to create a new task, you go ahead and make sure that you're selecting the right group. From that group, you have to select the right plan because you have multiple plans for groups, and so make sure you're sending that information to the right one. And then now you can start specifying the details for that task. So right here, we're showing how you can set the title, and you can add dynamic content from that form to add those details from the form request and put them right into Planner. So we're going to add um, the request, Vicky's email, so that the design team knows who's making this request. And then we'll add that specific item, so that, that detailed piece, uh, the request for the project assets, add it right to the title. Then we'll add it to the specific bucket, the new design request bucket. Um, and then we also want to make sure that we're setting um, the start date for all this work so the design team can understand how much time they have to be able to work and focus on this work item so that they can manage this work and prioritize it accordingly with all the other requests that they have. So go ahead and use a function to set the start time. And then, of course, the due date. Vicky needs this work by a specific date. So she entered that date in the form, and we're going to make sure that translates into the due date on the planner task as well. So we'll make sure we're selecting that form response and build the flow from there. So once you have that built, um, you can see just easily how you can connect that form input and um, add it to a planner board. So now we'll pop back over to Jackie, who's going to actually show you the beginning of this workflow um, and show you how to connect with project. Yeah, let's see. OK, we can hear me again. OK, battery works. This is good. OK. We're going to go backwards in time a little bit. Two. Seven first. Um, all right. So I'm going to go back to Vicky. So what Vicky is, a, uh, is on the ca uh, marketing team. and. Their team is in charge of building uh, campaigns for, for all sorts of marketing things across their company. So Vicky in particular, she's a content developer and she writes the awesome emails and uh, blog posts and she's just really great at this. But she can't really do that, here's her task, uh, task six, develop email message. She can't do that until the tasks before are done. So we can also see in um, a timeline view that there are two tasks that need to be completed before she can start her work. Now, those tasks, they keep getting moved. It, they, it changes all the time. So instead of Vicky kind of worrying and spending time thinking about when do I, what's going on with my task, like when do I start it, she can just build a workflow using the project data. So I'm going to show you um, 
how to build a flow with, to find out when Vicky's tasks, so my tasks, I'll be Vicky right now, um, are uh, when those change in date. So we're going to flip over and uh, play a video. So here we are at the flow page. We're going to create a new flow. And since we want to know when the task changes, we're going to be doing an automated flow, which basically means when x happens, run the flow. So like I said before, project data is built on the common data service. So we can just access that project data through CDS. So we're going to look for when a record is updated. Now, record's pretty generic, but that basically just means I can select any entity um, to check for a flow. Um, so we're going to select the default environment where my projects exist, and I'm going to look for the project tasks entity. And here I'll have all of the tasks, and, uh, and I will get a, the flow will run when, all of, when any of the tasks update. So um, I, Vicky only really cares about the start date changing. So we can actually filter this trigger to only run when um, the start date changes. We can also add other filters just to make my flows a little bit less noisy, because I don't care if someone renames it or if someone adds some other fields. I really only care about when does this start. Is it coming up or not? So next, since I, I care about my tasks as Vicky, um, I need to figure out my persona here. So Office has a really cool um, action that just gets my user profile. It's, it's called get my, my profile, and this will re return um, all the information about myself as Vicky um, for me. And this I can use to find um, out if this task is actually assigned to me. Um, so another thing is office, your Office user information is a little bit different than the Dynamics one. So we're actually going to get some more information about me by um, iterating through the uh, Dynamics user entity. So um, I'm going to go through that, get my user, and this will list out all of the user information across um, in CDS. So I'm going to filter this by me. So I'm taking my, ID, my user ID from the previous step and filtering this step on here so I can return my Dynamics user profile um, in order to um, get to figure out if these tasks, if the task that updated is assigned to myself. So another thing about um, the project data is the, ta uh, the task that updated doesn't actually have any information on who the owner is. So we're going to have to go a little backwards to figure out um, if the task that was updated is assigned to me. So previously, I talked about um, bookable resources. This is all, these are all of the resources that could be assigned um, work in projects. So we're going to loop through the list, uh, the table of bookable resources in order to find myself. So just pretty much right now finding me in this flow. So we're going to go through the bookable resources and match the user ID from the previous step um, to this so that I can return um, the bookable resource that is myself. And um, pro tip, these flows can get really complex, so I always like to name them because after you build a lot of actions, they, they kind of all muddle together and you don't want to mess up some of your, your data input. So just a pro tip for anyone building some complex flows. So next I want to find all of the things that are assigned to me um, with this bookable resource. So I have who I am as a bookable resource, and the resource assignment table has all of these um, assignments across um, all the projects. So I can choose that and pretty much um, filter again on the bookable resource that is me um, to get a return of all of the assignments, all of the tasks that are assigned to me across my projects. So that's why I'm filtering here uh, from the previous ID to um, connect to find all of uh, my assignments. So now that we have all of the tasks that are assigned to me, I don't really care about all of them right now. Vicky only cares if it's if the one that we tr we were triggering on um, has changed. So here we're going to add a conditional control. This is pretty much an if statement. Hopefully everyone here knows what an if statement is. But we're going to say if um, if the task uh, that is uh, that we're flowing on, so the original trigger, uh, is the same as any of the ones that are assigned to Vicky, it returns true. So we're just building that little if statement through flow. Much nicer than code if anybody here codes a little bit. Um, so pretty much once, um, if the answer is yes, so if the 
task that is changing is assigned to me, I want a notification. So Flow connects to a ton of connectors, um, email, uh, like the notification sign in office, or uh, Teams. So I, since Vicky works in Teams, she wants a notification through Teams to tell her that this task has changed. So in this case, she's now um, going to, we're going to post a message to Flow um, telling her, hey, this task has changed. Uh, the task you care about has changed. The start date has moved. So um, as that happens, we can kind of see um, how to solve a, a certain scenario using Power Automate by building flows. So this, uh, we can, so Vicky now gets notified every time uh, a task that she's assigned to moves out. So she could have solved this in other ways besides this like pretty complex flow, but I did want to show you how uh, the project data is all in CDS and how you can work with it and play with it to extend and make it more powerful. Some other things she could have done was check if um, the specific uh, task ID has changed or uh, checked on, uh, run a flow for the preceding task to see if there was a change. And there's so many ways to solve the same problem, um, but that's what Power Automate brings to us. It allows us to customize and build on top of the data we have to complete our, um, to complete our problems and, uh, our, and, and build some automation in. Um, so I, uh, so we're still building this Teams out, but I will show you um, what happens now when, um, when, something ch when her tasks change. Right. So here is Vicky's task. So if the, mark, the previous task takes a little bit longer than we expected, let's say it's getting delayed about a month, that, is, that will bump out Vicky's work. And um, that means she, doesn't, she shouldn't have to worry about this task for another month. So um, that's just since now um, she can't get this done until the marketing team does some work, which won't finish till December. So. Um, eventually, there we go, um, in Teams, as she's working, she'll get a little notification saying that that task has moved out. And now Vicky can uh, worry about her other work and think, okay, that one I'll deal with later once um, it comes to me. So um, yeah, so Flow allows us to customize um, on top of our data in a way that lets us solve our problems. Bump ahead a little bit. Great. So what's great about Flow is that not only does it help you save time um, by automating your specific work, it helps you save time by not having to write all of those connectors yourself. Uh, this is just a super high level um, snippet of the code that Flow is putting together for you. And this is just for that uh, planner example that we had. So a really simple um, piece of work there. So just saving you time from writing all of this code. Uh, and instead of having to do all of the connectors between MS Graph, MS Graph and APIs yourself, uh, Flow makes it really easy by giving those visual building blocks to make the components you need um, simply and easily. And at Microsoft, we want to make sure we're empowering you to feel in control and productive in the work that you need to do. And by automating your tasks with Power Automate, we make sure that all those mundane, redundant tasks are taken care of so you can focus on your key priorities, enabling you to stay focused, efficient, and confident every day so you can achieve more by doing less. And we have a few more uh, project and planner sessions still this week, so if you haven't joined us yet for anything else, um, please continue to listen to our following sessions. Um, and please make sure to reach out to us on our user voice, both project and planner, um, for additional requests or comments. Thank you so much for joining us today.